I'm here at Kerry D. Singleton, Intrigue Magazine. We're here at BB King's, having such a great time talking to so many awesome artists. It's a real R&B night here at BB King's in New York. But I, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I'm, I'm about to fan out because I bumped into Cassandra Lucas, one half of Changing Faces. Now, y'all know them for fooling around and, and just all the big hits that R. Kelly produced back in the 90s. My favorite... It was just one of them things. And I love you for that because we wrote that. Yeah, wow. Yes, it, see, you said wow. See, you feel, you know see? what it was? I told Cassandra before we got on the camera, uh -huh. you know, I get my heart broken. Right. Just one of the things comes out. And it, it's one of those situations where you feel, because I was an R&B fanatic. Right. I worked for Arrowstead back then, uh -huh. so I had all the access to the music. And Arrowstead was like the bomb.com, right? Com, right? You know, <laughs> and I'm getting all the free CDs. Mm -hmm. and all the, but the R&B in the 90s, not to take away from the 80s and the 70s, mm -hmm. but was, there was something serious. That was what people was like, like Mary, and, yes. and, and everybody was putting their heart into their music, and so I'm really not surprised from one writer to another mm -hmm. that you said that you wrote that song because it resonated more, and I'm a guy, right. but it resonated more because I could feel it. What was, but what was it like when you went to the studio to record that album? Well, it was real, a lot of fun. Let me tell you that because that was like our. We were just like, oh my god, we couldn't yeah. even believe we. You know, we could. We, I'm from East Harlem. Sharice yeah. from the Bronx, South yeah. Bronx. We had a record deal. We're right. like pinching ourselves, like, what the heck is and, going and on? Back then, in the '90s, a record deal meant something. It meant like today, something. It meant, but it meant something. You guys signed to Atlantic right. Records too. We were signed. Well, back then, the very first album we were signed to Spoil Rot and Big Beat. So Big Craig Palmen. Big Beat. Right. Was the head right. of Big Beat then, and we were signed to Small Rot and with Kenny. So, so it's like with uh, with uh, Tyra Kemp was on Big Beat. Um, yep. yeah, I yeah, am. yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Good company. So, what was it like for you to uh, East Harlem and the South Bronx in the studio now? I know. Well, we both went to um, LaGuardia High School, a performing arts. That's how we yes. met. Yeah. You know. <laughs> LaGuardia, right, That's how we met. Mm -hmm. So for us to be in the studio, we would always like sing background. We sing background for Sybil. So we were always, oh, yeah, that. that's how we, that's, that's that. really when we tapped in and said we wanted to do that as, do this uh, as a amazing. duo. Yes. Amazing. Because we were able to see the world, see the first hand reaction from the crowd. You know right. what I'm saying? Like to be on stage and just to feel the love that if you sang, they gave it, it back to you. Right, 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 right. And it right. was instant. It's not like a movie, like you shoot it and you have to go in a the theater and you don't right. know really how people feel about it. It was take. right at that moment, right. yes. Wow. And we fell in love with it. Then we have to we have to really thank Sybil for giving us the opportunity to tour with us a because without that experience, we would not really be able to, yeah. I didn't, I didn't even know that. And I thought I was the biggest <laughs> change of faces uh, uh, fan in the game. Okay, so you know I have to ask, you know, um, what was it like working with R. Kelly at a time when his sound alone was incredible. Signature. Right. It was incredible. Let me tell you, when we, people always thought that we were R. Kelly's group, but we weren't. We, we didn't, we didn't even know him. When we had our, when we first got signed, the label had asked us, give us a wish list of people that you want to work with. I know. Wow. Yes. Yeah, okay. Nobody knows wow. that story. So he was one of the people on our wish list. Because he was with public announcement then, and right. they had Honey Love, and Honey he was Love. getting ready to start right. with his own uh, solo career, mm -hmm. they did, the label didn't think we could even get him. They were like, I don't know if that's possible, but we'll send your demo. Wow. Well, they sent our demo, and lo and behold, he called and said, I want to work with these girls. So I think maybe just one of those things might have been on our demo. Cassidy, let me ask you a question. <laughs> Who else was on that wish list? You know what? Someone else asked me that. And now it's all a blur. I think it was <laughs> because right now R. Kelly was like right. the main thing, right. you know. And with us, and the combination of our voices with his production and writing, it was just magic. Right. So yeah. I mean, we would uh, stroke you up, fooling around, right. get out. Right. You know, we couldn't ask for that. Was just a blessing. And then there was the remix to get out. Oh, did you love that or what? I <laughs> not as much as just one of the things. I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm just going to keep that out there. But um, your album was phenomenal. I mean, the vocals were serious. The writing was crazy. The production was great. And I'm also, uh, I, I want to add this as an R&B fan. 
This was an era where all of R. Kelly's music somewhat sounded the same. Right. It had like that signature sound. Right. But your album didn't pronounce, it wasn't like this is an R. Kelly song. Mm -hmm. To me, it was more like this is a Changing Faces song right. with R. Kelly in it. Right. Well, let me tell you probably why that happened is because we weren't an R. Kelly protege. Gotcha. So right. what happened was we sent him our demo. So he had already heard how we approached writing and how we approached right. songs. Right. And like Cherise had the lighter voice, I had a more of the sultry sounding voice. Uh -huh. So I think when he went to write for us, he took that with him. Inco so that's why it sounds organically right. ours right. and not exactly. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. It's always great to have an opportunity to meet your favorite artists and hear the real stories. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you a question I ask a lot of people when I interview them. Okay. What was your favorite Changing Faces song? Wow. Um, you had to pick one. Out of all of them. You had to pick one. Mm. One that you would have wanted to get a Grammy for, not in terms of sales necessarily, mm -hmm. but in terms of how you felt about the song. Um, I want to go back to um, a producer named Zinky Bingham. He okay. actually helped us. He, we did our demo with him, and he was one of the reasons why a lot of people don't know this. We wrote the majority of all of our albums. So, and Dinky was one of the ones that schooled us from the Jamaica boys. Okay. And he schooled us and let us know that, you know, a pretty face, you're always going to find a pretty face. Right. And you're always going to find women that can sing. Right. But you need to get out there and put the pen to the pad right. and write your music. Because when those checks stop coming in for performing, you will still That's continue right. to get checks. And I right. thank him for that to this right. day. So, and it's a right. song that we did with Dinky called A Good Thing. Okay. I really, the, the, the song just says a lot. You go back and listen so you, a it's called thing. A Good Thing. Okay. It's from the very first Change okay. of Faces album. Such a beautiful ensemble of music and production and, and voices and marketing. Let's keep mm -hmm. it real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, they they yes. made sure that you guys were everywhere. Uh, yes. Um, so let's talk today. Okay. Sandra Lucas today mm -hmm. is on stage doing her thing here at BB Kings. Mm -hmm. I am just like... The sister ain't missed a step. Oh, thank you. I and hope you enjoyed the I, show. I really did. And, and one of the things that I feel is so important, I think a lot of artists today lose touch with what's going on around them. Right. Janet Jackson's Little Nation was one of my favorite albums by her, and it was because she looked outside of herself. Right, right. I'm really, really, really excited to hear that you have a project coming out yes. where you're talking about love, and, and, and you said here at BB Kings uh -huh. that it was because you felt the world needed that. Yes. Talk to me about that. I really, really do. Um, and I think timing is everything. You know, I, I thank God, thank God that I still have my voice, and I've yes, had it all these years. Yes. Well, I'm just saying that to say I could have come out, you know, 10 years ago. Right, yeah. But I feel like the time is now yes. because of the, the state of the world that we're in. Thank so you. I think, and like I said on stage, that, that love lane that we had, I think that's what it was in the 90s. Whether you were singing about being hurt from love or being in love, right. it was, it was, you can feel it. Yeah. And I'm missing feeling. I'm missing Thank feeling you. in music nowadays. And I'm like, if I could, you know, drive this train and then have all, it's a lot of dormant t talent artists that yes, are sitting still. They need to get up, come out, and we need to overwhelm the system That's right. <laughs> with good stuff. And, then, and, and, really and, do. And, and, and and don't be fooled into thinking that there aren't people like me that want to hear that. Right, but they are. And, right, and, exactly. and, you, and you don't have it to hear. Right. And like this gentleman said behind the camera, <laughs> you know, why do we have to be called old school artists? Right. Why can't the same artists still continue to do music? We right. need to have a different name. We need to be classic. Uh, the, real or music. the real deal. Right. You know? Whatever, yes. but they're, they're, they're too talented to sit still. Exactly. They're too talented right. to sit still. Are you excited about your new project? I am. Yeah, but I know I am. Excited. I'm I know I am. Excited. It's different for me because I'm used to like somebody on my right or somebody on my left. Correct. But you know what? I was born by myself and I believe God got this. And right. I've got a great right. project. So right. I think you're going to enjoy it. And I'm really, I'm really excited, Cassandra, because I mean, this is an opportunity for you to do you. You don't have to necessarily split the ideas with another person or, 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 or your idea of how you want to come across to your audience. 
Yeah. So I think this is a very empowering moment for you, probably. It really is, and because I've grown so much. Right. I'm not the same girl. I'm not the same woman that I was in 2000. That was our last album, 2001. You mix it because black is not black. Uh, I'm trying. I'm yeah. trying. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's, yeah, but I'm not that I've grown so much, and I have things that are near and dear to my heart that I want to well, sing about, about and about say. It, yes. And sometimes creatively, when you do deal with other people, you might not be on the same page. Hey, right, exactly. And that's okay. Right. Well, because we can do it on our own. And right. if God permits or He wants it, then we can come back together too. You know. But right now, I need to do this. <laughs> and I think I think you need to do this. What is the proposal? I don't want to throw too much out there. Uh -huh. but what is the? Do you have an idea of what you're going to call the project? It's going to be something containing love because I'm telling you every song like you're gonna listen it's, it's just because I need to drill it I need to drill it in people's heads I feel, I feel like it's there it's a big boy Cassandra <laughs> Lucas love hmm. Hmm. maybe maybe what I'm gonna do is like we did for you, I don't know if you know the story about our name for changing faces. No, I don't. Um, when we were coming out, um, Big Beat was about to um, send the record to radio, so they had right. the people waiting to press the CDs, because back then we had the CDs. Right. And we got a call. Our name was originally Face to Face. Okay. And we got a call from a rock band saying that they were sitting there lamping, waiting for us to put the songs out because they were going to sue us. We did not know wow. that they owned the name. They didn't come out in years and years and years. But they heard that we were coming out, and it was like, okay, we're going to make some money off of them. Right. So, the business of music. Right, people. exactly. So, what we did was we got it around table with our lawyers, our managers, everybody, and we said, throw a name in the hat. And whatever name comes out, that's the name of our group. Wow. And we said that because at the end of the day, all that matters is the music. If the music is not great, you can be called banana. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and nobody would care. Right. So, we, you know, we were forced to to do that, but out of it came Changing Faces. And with Changing Faces, we we loved it because it, it allows us to evolve. Evolve, yes. right. And you embrace the name. Yes. So, so let us know uh, social media, how people can reach out to you. Um, well, on my Instagram and, and Twitter. No, on my Instagram, see, I get mixed up with this. My Instagram and Facebook is I am Cassandra Lucas. Okay. And for Twitter, is Cassandra of CF. Okay. Of, like Changing Faces, CF. And now, before I let you go, sweetie, mm -hmm. Uh, to all of our Intrigue magazine YouTube viewers and listeners, uh -huh. what would you like to say to them, um, your fans, your friends, those who may not be familiar with your music? Whoever. I'd like to say that I'm super excited about this album, and please go check out the release. Go follow me on our him, Cassandra Lucas, because you need to hear it. You need to hear it. You will not be disappointed. <laughs> I know I won't be. I'm looking so forward to your your career as Thank a solo you. artist, uh, your reemergence, your growth, Thank and the you. results of it. And I, I, I'm definitely excited that I get to, this time around, I get to be a part of it. I, I I'm to excited to meet you yes. and to yes. uh, thank you for well, your thank support you. of all these years. Thank you. And I didn't even know you, but you supported me. That is dope. I think <laughs> one of the really cool things about this job that I have with Intrigue Magazine is I get the opportunity to speak to artists. And because I was so deeply entrenched into music, mm -hmm. not just because I was working at the labels, but because I was a fan of Army Music, mm -hmm. the opportunity that Intrigue Magazine has given me to meet these artists and actually sit and tell them, your music meant something to me. Your music touched me. And that thank is, you for that. That is, You know what I'm yes. saying? Cassandra, and again, I, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart uh, for putting out great music that in times of my own confusion helps me see clearly. You're, you're welcome and thank you thank for you. your support. Thank you. Fan hug. <laughs> fan hug. Fan hug. Thank you. Cassandra Lucas, everybody, don't you forget to look her up. <laughs> Social media again. I am Cassandra Lucas she and is. Cassandra of CF. Yes. <laughs> Street Magazine, KBC, and I'm here with Cassandra Lucas having a great time. Let's go. Let's go.